If you're using visuals, video, and live performance, and you want them to be perfectly in sync with your tracks and your click, then you need to be using LTC. In this tutorial, I'm gonna explain exactly what LTC is, how to generate it from Ableton Live, and how to set this up for live performance. Okay, so first let's talk about what LTC is. LTC stands for Linear Time Code, and it's the audio version of SMPTE. Now, the purpose of this, the goal of this is to keep things in sync. We have one source that's gonna send LTC and everything else in the network, everything else in the system is going to listen to that and stay in sync. So I said SMPTE, there's LTC, linear timecode, which is audio, there's MTC, which is MIDI timecode. Now, uh, how do we use it? Well, essentially what we can do, like I said, is it, we can use Ableton Live, in this case, that's what we're gonna use, uh, to send an LTC file out, and then our lighting console, our media server, can listen for that LTC, and it's gonna monitor exactly where it is as it's playing, and it's gonna stay perfectly in sync. Well, how does it do that? Well, it's essentially embedded in every LTC file is this information. It says where this hour, uh, we are at this minute, we're at this second, we are at this frame. And so as Ableton Live plays along and sends that data out, the media server or the lighting console is going to listen to that and go, oh, I, I need to go to this exact minute. Oh, Ableton jump back. I'm gonna jump back to that minute. Oh, Ableton jumped ahead. Or it's just playing normally and it's gonna follow perfectly along. So in your lighting console, you hear one hour, uh, minute two, second three, frame, whatever and you have a cue program, so right when you get to that moment in the timeline, it's going to trigger, that's great. When you play a video, it's gonna say, hey, this video is gonna to jump to this section, it's gonna follow along. It's a way to keep your performances perfectly in sync. Now, enough talking, how do we do this in Ableton Live? Well, if you have worked with a lighting de designer before, if you've been in a uh, live performance environment, you may have heard someone say, hey, can you generate some LTC files for me from Ableton? And you've gone into Ableton and you've gone, um, yeah, so let's go to preferences. Maybe there's like a generate option. I don't really see it. You've Googled, hopefully you found yourself in this video. Well, I'm here to let you know the bad news. One, Ableton Live does not generate LTC natively, but let you know the good news. It's very easy to make this happen. Here's how we make this happen. We use LTC in Ableton Live by using what's called a striped audio track. That's just fancy live performance talk for a audio track, a pre-recorded audio track. Number one, it's really important to understand with LTC, particularly in using Ableton Live, it's just an audio file. So people get freaked out because it's magical, it's mystical, and they go, but how do I route it? What do I do with it? It's an audio file. Now Ableton Live does not natively generate LTC. There's some really cool live plugins um, uh, that, uh, like Live MTC that lets you send MIDI timecode from Ableton Live. Some really cool stuff. I'll link in the description of that. We won't talk about it in this video, but here's a really great way to use LTC in Ableton Live. Head to from studiotostage.com slash timecode, and you can download my free timecode template, uh, which is gonna give you access to uh, pre-recorded striped LTC files that you can use in Ableton Live. Here's how we use them. So I'm gonna go over to my browser. I already downloaded these. Uh, I'm gonna go to timecode free, which again is my free template. And you're gonna notice I have a couple different flavors, a couple different versions of this. And I'll talk about what all these are and what this uh, gobbledygook here is at the front of this. Uh, but I'm gonna load this right into Ableton Live. Now, hold your ears for a second. I'm gonna play this. That's what LTC sounds like. To me, it sounds a lot like a dial-up modem. If you are old enough to remember back in the internet days with AOL, you would dial up to the internet, everything would be great. You'd be chatting with your friends from school uh, until your mom picked up the phone and you lost your internet connection. So um, that's a bit what it sounds like. Again, embedded in that is that data, but all it is is an audio file. So don't be freaked out by that, okay? We're gonna talk about how to route this because in a previous version of, of this video, people said, great, now I've got this audio file all over my music. Well, just hold on, we're gonna talk about how to route this and how to use this live. But number one, I said, it's important to remember LTC is just audio. So I went to from studiotostage.com slash timecode and I just brought in a timecode file, right? That's super easy, we'll talk about how to route it in a moment. But the number two, maybe even more important than number one to remember when it comes to LTC is it's all about frame rate. And frame rate has nothing to do with the frame rate your video's in. It has nothing to do with the frame rate your video is recorded at. It has everything to do with what your lighting console, media server, whatever you are sending timecode to 
is expecting timecode to be at. So for example, if you look at the free timecode template uh, that I offer again from, from Studio to Stage, you can see I've got a couple different timecode uh, frame rates here. 23.98, 24, 25, 2997, 2997 drop frame, 30 and 30 drop frame. Again, this has nothing to do with what your video is recorded at. It has everything to do with what your um, your lighting console, what your media server is expecting. And based on where you are in the world, there's typically standards if you go out on a tour uh, of what people are going to be using. But all you got to do is ask the LD, the person who's running lights, that's running the media server, hey, what are you expecting time code to be at? And you just drop that file into your Ableton set. So let's talk about how to perfectly get everything synced up. Okay. And again, I keep mentioning routing. We'll talk about how to route this for live performance. So I've got my audio file, uh, my LTC file dropped into my Ableton live set. Okay. Let's talk about how I route this for live performance. How do I get this back to my media server, to my lighting console? Again, remember, it's important to remember this is just audio. So we're going to get audio to our uh, media uh, server, to our lighting console, the same way that we get audio to our soundboard. So for example, this is my audio interface that I just used, uh, Play Audio 12. And you can see, I mean, it's a, it's a little crazy here, but output eight was time code, right? So if you look at the back of this, these are all my inputs for, uh, outputs rather for music. Output eight was for time code. So the way that I got time code from Ableton Live to uh, Audio World for them to get it wherever we needed to was an output on my interface. So let's go into Ableton Live. If you've ever used Ableton Live in a live performance playback environment, you know we go to preferences, command comma. We go to choose our output. In this case, I'm gonna choose black hole. Uh, we go to output config to make sure we enable enough outputs. In this case, I've got 12 set up. That's perfect for me. And what I would do is I would go through and route outputs for my tracks. Uh, I use return tracks for the way that I set up tracks. So I would go through and route all my return tracks here properly to my interface. And then what I would do is go to my timecode output and go output to external out. And here's what's super important with this is I've got to make sure I choose an output that's discrete, that's separate from everything else. So in this case, most likely I'm going to choose output 12. I'm going to make sure I'm not sending click down output 12. I'm not sending guide down output 12. I'm not sending any tracks out of output 12. All I'm sending is just time code. And then you send that out of your computer and it's pretty much out of your hands at that point. Now, depending on the scenario you're in, that signal may go to an audio console. Uh, they may patch it through a patch bay to the, the media server, to a, a lighting desk, whatever they do. Uh, they may take that signal and go into a distripalizer to fix, to repair the signal, to then send it a long distance. Um, uh, at that point, it's kind of out of your hands. Don't stress about it. Don't worry. If it is in control of your hands, just think it's audio. So take an output of your audio console, get into your lighting desk, into your media server, whatever you need to do. Uh, now, I've taught this enough times to know um, particularly for folks in a house of worship environment or a, a more install environment. Maybe you're in a venue that has Dante installed. You're in a church scenario where you have Dante installed where you go, but Will, we can't use time code because we're using Dante. Well, is, is, are you using Dante to get, you know, signal out of Ableton? Well, well yeah, we're using it for tracks. Well, is time code audio? Yeah. So can we use time code with Dante? Yes. Right. So again, don't, there's nothing mystical. There's nothing magical here. It's just signal. We want to get it out of Ableton Live and we want to send it to um, our audio console and then let other people deal with it. Okay, a couple things really important before we wrap up this video. Uh, just some tips and tricks I want to share that's going to help you do this successfully. Okay, uh, number one, on your audio file here, make sure it is unwarped. You can change your tempo of your tracks, but you do not want your, um, your timecode file to be warped. Now, you go, but Will, if I change my, my tempo of my tracks, they're going to be playing out of time with my video, right? Well, yes, your time code is just going to follow, uh, you know, wherever you are in your Ableton set. And if you're going to change your tempo in Ableton, you need to make the changes to that video. Now, most of us when we're using videos live, uh, unless you're doing like a more VJ thing where you're triggering videos at certain moments and they're looping and live looping. In those scenarios, it's better to use MIDI because you can change your, your, uh, your tracks and your videos will follow. You could set up Resolume, for example, to change tempo if you want to of your video. But that's a whole nother discussion for a whole nother day. In this type of scenario, here's kind of the best workflow typically uh, uh, to work with. Uh, one, again, make sure your, your timecode file is unwarped. You want to talk to your LD to, 
the media person to the, the um, whoever, tour manager, and say, okay, what frame rate are we gonna be working with? Great, for this example, we'll use 2997. It doesn't matter, it's just make sure everyone's using the same thing. So then what I typically do when I'm working with someone using timecode is they'll say, hey, um, can you get me a track that has timecode on the left and the tracks on the right so that the lighting designer can uh, you know, pre-program lights, right? So then what I would do is uh, I would take my audio here, let's set it to master, and then I would pan this to the left and I would pan all of my audio content, which is just this for now. I could choose to give them click if I wanted. Let's say I wanted to give them click. Uh, we'll send click and everything else to the right and we'll send time code to the left. Then I'm gonna do Command Shift R to export this. Uh, and I'm just gonna enable MP3 to export this and I'm gonna click export. And that's gonna export a file of my tracks with time code so that people can then go and program to that, which is super important. Okay, uh, another thing that is helpful to remember is make sure your time code file, the gain is just right. It's not too loud, it's not too soft. So when you play this, you wanna check your gains and make sure again, your level, again, it's just audio. So it's just like a microphone. If I plug a microphone in and I'm pushing the preamp too much, you know, it may sound fine, when it's like soft and I'm just kind of normally singing, but as I really dig in, I'm clipping the pre's. You want to make sure that you have plenty of signal that it's consistent, but it doesn't clip the pre's. Now it's going to be a consistent level, but you want to make sure it's consistently loud enough. It's not too quiet. It's not too uh, too loud. So you want to spend some time, um, you know, making sure your level is good. The level from your interface is good. The level to your lighting console or whatever is is just right. Okay. Um, another thing, um, important thing to remember when when working with time code is you wanna think about um, the hours that you're working with. So um, a pro tip that I typically do when I'm working with folks is, um, so I have this free time code file again from studiostage.com slash time code. I also have a time code, a time code template that you could download and, uh, and purchase. If you're from Studio Stage subscriber, you can get for free using credits. I'll put links in the description of this. Uh, don't buy it unless you're really into time code and you're really doing this, but um, you can, or if you're a subscriber, you can get this. But let's say we're working at, again, 2997. I'm building out my entire uh, set, right? What I would suggest typically doing is use your hours to mark songs in your set. Now, obviously we only have 24 hours, so if you're going beyond 24 songs, then this doesn't necessarily work. But let's say song one in our set is going to be hour one, okay? Let's say song two in our set is gonna be song two, uh, hour two. Song three in our set is going to be hour three. Now you're looking at that and going, Will, you're staying with one live file. Well, just imagine this was a different uh, live set, you know, of multiple files here. And again, this is super, super long. This runs for an hour, so we could kill that. Um, I also included my template so that you don't have to do what I just did there. 15 minute versions of this. So um, uh, if you're doing an hour and you want an hour, but it's only 15 minutes of time code as opposed to a full hour, um, I can start at hour one and do 15 minutes there, right? Which is super, super helpful. Uh, so uh, use the hours to, to set up for different songs. Song three is hour three, uh, song four is hour four. I will say the two biggest issues I run into when I'm working with um, a, a band, an artist or a church using time code to sync their tracks to, to time code is number one, frame rates incorrect. So one device is expecting this frame rate, another device is expecting this frame rate, so it doesn't work. The other thing is just communication. You press play on song three and suddenly the video for song four plays. Well, uh, a Google Sheet is a, is a marvelous, marvelous trick in live production. All you do is go song three is song three, song four is our four, song three is, is our three. That's gonna help keep things going and clear and concise uh, for people. So that's another thing that I uh, see and discover with people. A, a final tip here, I know I'm going long. Final tip here that may be beneficial. Um, a lot of people suggest uh, starting your time code uh, before your song so that you have a little bit of time for, uh, for instance, the media server, the lighting console to see time code, to make sure everything's together. So most people don't start their time code right at the hour. They would maybe start it a little bit before. So for example, for this song, if I'm dragging this into the song, I'm doing this for real, there's a lot of stuff. I would do command I, Oop, I don't wanna do that. Let's go to the beginning here. I would do command I, there we go. And we'd set time to insert. Let's insert one measure. And I would nudge my time code over. Okay, and that's just gonna start my time code. And um, I would move the start of my song over to the left. And now when I trigger this, 
and I press play, my time code is gonna run for a second, and then my song's gonna start here. So then again, render this file out, give that to your LD, to the person running media. They're gonna listen to this, they're gonna program to this, and when you get to the pre-course of this song, it's gonna get to this specific place in the time code, and then they're gonna be able to program and add their cues. So again, I hope this tutorial demystified LTC and time code for you. I hope it let you know that you can drop time code into Ableton Live as long as it's unwarped, as long as your volume level is fine. Again, the easiest way to do this from studiostage.com slash timecode to download some free timecode files. Um, have those on your hard drive so you always have access and availability to them. Um, again, make sure they're unwarped, your volume is good. Um, uh, you know, Make sure you communicate well with what the frame rate is and what hour you're using for each of your songs. Consider pre-roll. And just remember, whatever your time code is set in your Ableton set, if you change tempo of your songs, whatever it is, that time code is going to play. So if you change anything with your song, you've got to communicate that with the people that are expecting time code to say, hey, we sped this up, so we're actually gonna get to this point faster. We slowed this down, so we're gonna get to this point slower. Re-render those exports uh, and get those to people. But be kind to the people programming lights and don't make tons of changes like that. If you find yourself doing that, then ditch time code. Use MIDI, use Resolume, something where you can just trigger specific parts of a video. But I hope that helps. If you're interested in more content like this, make sure to hit subscribe, enable the bell icon. Again, head to fromstudiostage.com slash timecode completely free to download that template to get started. Use that as a proof of concept. And if you wanna upgrade from there, you can download and upgrade to the paid timecode template. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Take care, everybody.